So by joining OMA, especially as a startup, we were able to get involved with the whole device management community. So the ecosystem of operators and vendors involved in device management, and then really learn how we can apply our technology to that problem. So we were able to come in to the device management space and um, bring in the set of requirements we had from customers and partners around um, managing lightweight Internet of Things devices. And we could accomplish a new enabler. So together with other interested OMA members, um, we started and, and finished an enabler specification, which is now in approval at, at the OMA. And that took um, just over a year. So it was a very fast process compared to many SDOs. Yeah, the Explorer membership was a really good way to start for us because especially as a startup or an SME, um, it's a big risk to go and join an alliance, put the uh, travel and manpower resources behind it if you're not sure that you can really accomplish something. So the Explorer membership let us get our, get our feet wet. Um, we could come to a few meetings, start contributing, see if other people believed in what, what we believed in, and then go on with a full membership. So it worked, worked perfectly for us. So OMA is in, organized into working groups, um, is where the actual technical work gets done. And the way we've actually operated is, is each member um, works towards a, a new work item. And the requirement document really gives the direction for the technical, the technical specification. Once that requirement document's done, um, the work is really about contributing pieces of that technical specification. So each member will contribute a piece, it'll be discussed, you'll combine ideas with other contributions, and eventually each contribution is approved. That gets put together by an editor into a technical specification, which eventually is finalized, comment rounds are done, and then approved. <laughs>what you may know is that uh, the the OMA has been driving the lightweight device management standard and we've been really active in in helping to drive that along and also in in implementing that in our products so on my talk on Wednesday I'm going to be talking about about that standard a little bit a little bit of background at that, about that standard and also announcing a white paper that is being done in the industry in order to give some education around the standard in terms of OMA, the, we obviously we use the, the um, GNSS aiding the SUPL system that was standardised and the benefits for us are that that standardised pipe work allows us to scale across multiple devices and platforms. We also see activity in the future where standardisation for the delivery of indoor maps and information such as how high is the, the ceiling, um, you know, what is the height for each floor change. The standardization of that is going to improve the user, the end user experience. So we're quite excited to see that OMA is getting involved in this and that people like OpenGML are bringing um, proposals for standards to the table. Okay. So uh, at the Icar Institute we are a mobile uh, application developer and contributing to the development of new standards is very important for us because uh, today, when you develop a scanning application, it's really a nightmare to get the right information and to get the right scanning. So, if the, the standard could be, could be deployed massively, it would be much more easier for app developers to make some cool and innovative applications. So, we can take our time just to, to develop cool features and not uh, only uh, thinking how we should uh, scan all these different barcodes and uh, where we can, could have the, the information. Our implementation refers to the OMA service environment. Uh, and I think uh, there are two components in the standard are very useful. Uh, the first one is a policy enforcer. As I said before, with big data analysis, we gain some basic policies. After that, we put them into the policy enforcer. 
uh, where the policies are managed and enforced. Uh, finally, we got the decision of uh, which service we should push to the end user. And the se second one is the opening interface of uh, I1, defined by o OSE. With this interface, uh, we can easily exchange information between enablers and uh, execution environment. That's a great help for us to manage all these enablers. Yeah. Standards are very important, and OMA has played a very significant role in uh, providing technologies and standards which, with which you can manage uh, devices over the air. Um, it, there are going to be lots of these devices, and unless there is a standards in place, there are going to be a chaos. There will be a lot of vertical solutions, and uh, it will it will hamper the growth of the industry as a general. So, um, being here working with OMA has helped us in making sure that all the devices which are OMA compliant can be managed easily with our server. Uh, we do interoperability with almost all the vendors, uh, including Samsung, LG, uh, and people who make uh, clients like Redbend, Caffeinated Turtle. So all these uh, ecosystem partners of ours work with us on, with our scalable multi-tenancy product, and they provide the clients on these devices. So we have a very, uh, very comprehensive uh, device uh, certification uh, program which is used by all the OEMs and all the devices around the globe. Um, so the process within OGC, obviously there's a standards creation side to what we do and that works through a series of working groups that um, of technical professionals from different organisations creating a standard but it's one thing to create a standard and put it down on a piece of paper, it's an entirely different thing to take that standard and actually turn it into a real world environment and then test it to see how it goes. So we have a series of programs within the OGC that actually goes from a, a specification document through into a test bed environment that actually tests it out in real world scenarios to see whether it works or not and it, it then cycles back through the standards process to actually create better standards and improve and update the standards that we've got within there as well. Uh, that sits alongside as well an education program that sits under my own uh, environment which is communications and outreach to actually help people understand how you utilise the standards when they go out there. Standards are critical. They really, they're what allow for proven tested means to be able to connect to networks, to connect devices to one another, to interoperate with each other, to, um, to communicate across networks. Right, if everything was protocol, I remember the very early days of, of cellular coverage, it was really bad. You couldn't roam from one network to another. And so, you, you know, the carriers are driving these standards. We've been an active member of the Open Mobile Alliance for over 10 years now. Um, all of our code, it's in our DNA. It's what we do. And we're bringing, we feel there's an rich opportunity for us to play in the space between the OEMs and the carriers that just extends this ecosystem and provides a rich avenue for new monetization. Uh, lightweight M2M uh, protocol is uh, important because of uh, lack of uh, uh, remote device management solution for the M2M and Internet of Things market. Uh, there are obviously existing solutions like TR069, which is available in the uh, wireline space, historically developed by Broadband Forum, etc., etc. And then equivalent is uh, OMADM uh, protocol for managing mobile phones. Both of them are very, very chatty and very demanding in terms of uh, bandwidth to deliver the remote device management. And with this new wave of machine to machine, uh, devices and Internet of Things devices which are very constrained in terms of resources that they can or that they have to uh, do the device management. So the protocol was developed with the aim for uh, uh, optimum, efficient, secure uh, protocol to manage these millions and billions of devices that are coming to the uh, on air to be connected to the Internet.
啊、呃，大家好，我是胡博，来自中国联通，现在在 OMA CD 组 Content Delivery 工作组，呃，任副主席。呃 ，OMA 真的是一个呃涵盖整个产业链、移动移动整个产业链的一个标准组织。那它的参与者包括呃移动运营商、包括设备厂商、终端厂商，甚至于芯片厂商，还有呃 OTT 的一些啊，包括 IT 的一些厂商。那我们做的一些规范，比如说。呃，像 AOI 叫 Always Online Infrastructure， 是呃叫永远在线的一个技术平台，它可以帮助这个 OTT 的厂商去利用运营商的网络，呃，向终端去发送永远在线的一些消息。那还有比如说像 OpenSAM API， 像未来我们要做的 Device API， 它可以就是帮助呃。终端厂商包括芯片厂商，来根据定义好的这个 device API 去去实现呃真正终端层面的这个标准接口，这样的话有利于整个产业的这个发展，包括开发者使用 OMA 的这个规范，包括使用呃整个技术的标准去实现这个应用的这些开发，这样子。